Which explosive is best versus buildings? The answer is not what you think it's going to be. We're going to calculate it on damage per entity, but also damage for the resources required to craft it. So we're going to break it down and figure out what's the cheapest way to destroy a building and also what's the most time effective way. So what are we testing? The simple cluster, the Avenger, the woodpecker, the infiltrator, and the sticky grenades, as well as the grenade launcher. If we take a look at the tech tree, these are going to be the top tiers of the explosive classes in the tech tree, with the exception of one or two small items. At the end, we're going to have a bonus, the max range of the infiltrator against tanks, and that range is going to surprise you. So let's first take a look at what we're doing. So you can see we have a bunch of floor pieces down so we can actually see the damage over distance. And then I did half walls up the center so that way we can see the max amount of damage per half wall length, just to break it down a little bit more than the other ones. So let's get into the actual math of it. So the cluster bomb explodes and it does a pretty good bit of damage. To the immediate wall behind it, the one that was directly behind it, the simple cluster mine does 1,068 damage, and that's going to be to the lowest wall on the right side. So 1,068 damage, which comes out to 178 damage per explosive used, using 10 explosives total. So now let's take a look up top and see how high the damage went. So if we go all the way up, we can see we're still getting damage. Four full blocks of damage. And you'll see later with the detonators that the explosives max range is four on the bigger ones. So the cluster, the remote detonator, those are four. We could see that it damaged that one tungsten foundation under it, but it doesn't look to have done much to the other ones. I do find it odd that it only did damage to the foundation under it, so we're going to run some additional testing to make sure that that was not a glitch. So first I blow it up, it explodes, and then I actually realize that I still have the other guy in the squad, so I kick him from the squad, so now this is all enemy stuff to me. And now the damage has actually changed, and we can see here again that it is not updated at all like it should have. So we'll throw a couple more just to test it out, make sure that we're not missing something. Yep, so nothing's getting damaged. This one is starting to get about halfway down with the clusters. So let's move past the clusters and let's get on to the Avenger rocket launcher. Yes, I am aiming a little high, but you have to remember the drop on the Avenger. So I get the one rocket off. Let's go see what it did. So the Avenger rocket launcher does 1,785 damage to that first piece. So that's going to be 297.5 damage per explosive use. There's some other resources, yes, but explosives are generally what people have the hardest time getting. So now if we look up here, we'll see no damage. And then here there is damage. So it does two blocks up. So two full blocks, not two half, but two full blocks of damage upwards, which I still find to be a pretty decent amount for what this is, especially firing from range. However, still only damage on that one foundation. So let's give it another love tap and see what's going on here. All right, so that one got hit, but still no damage to the other. So it seems like the splash damage only affects the foundation under the actual explosive. So let's move on to the remote detonator, the remote bomb C4. So how far can we actually throw it with the assistant? So the great thing about this one is you have a great distance to throw it from, and you can even throw it from farther than that if you trust yourself to calculate that arc out. So now all the way back here, I can step up and it can be a little buggy to aim sometimes. You'll see it keeps randomly clicking every now and again. And there's the explosion. So let's get up here and let's look at the testing of this. So. The remote bomb did 197 damage per explosives. There's 12 explosives and it did 2,368 damage. So this does the most damage per any one item, right? So per this one detonator, this one bomb pack, it will do more damage than any other item that is going to be on here today. However, we still have a lot to test and you can see that the remote bomb only did 197 damage. That's what, that's what the damage comes out to for the 12 explosives compared to the Avenger rocket launcher, which per explosive did 297. So a hundred more damage per the Avenger rocket launcher explosive used to make the rocket than the actually remote bomb. So early mid game raids, if you have explosives, they're very difficult to get because you need to get that wheat farm set up. The Avenger rocket launcher is a solid and cheaper way if you're running low on explosives but have plenty of gunpowder because the two expensive resources are explosives and gunpowder on the Avenger rocket compared to the remote bomb where it uses five polymer, eight organic solvent and 12 explosives. So to reiterate, the remote bomb does the most damage per single explosion. However, it does not do the most damage per explosives used in creation. 
So now that I've added those extra items on top, we're gonna redo this bomb testing to see how high the actual explosion can go. Due to some errors in the testing, I did have to cut through and rebuild some things, but let's run up to the top now and take a look at how much damage this actually does. So if we go all the way up to the top, you're gonna see that it doesn't damage that one up there. It only damages up to the four blocks tall. So the max explosion is gonna be four blocks. That's the max radius it's gonna do. So a bomb in the center of the room should only damage the one foundation it's on, but everything else around it that's above it, such as tables, lockers, stuff like that, walls, it should do damage to all those up to about four blocks out. Okay, so now we have reset. Let's get into the woodpecker. If you didn't know, if you're in a jam, and the woodpecker's all you have, you could use it as anti-tank, it just won't lock on, and you could fire it against buildings or other players, and we're gonna show you the max range of that later. So now, looking at this tungsten wall, the woodpecker did 1,197 damage to it. So, that is gonna be, per explosive used, 299 damage, which is pretty good. 299 damage per explosive used, only having four explosives. So this per explosives for crafting purposes does more damage per explosives than the actual remote bomb does. The remote bomb does 197. This one is up to 299, which is pretty impressive. Now, of course, this one also uses another 16 gunpowder. So that is going to factor in. We're going to show you this chart here at the very end. The grenade launcher is anti-infantry, but some people were asking about it. So here it is. These walls are at full health. 421 damage, that's what the grenade launcher does. So that is gonna be per explosive used to craft, 210 damage, which is pretty good. However, the downside of this one is gonna be what makes the remote bomb so good. The remote bomb, you throw five bombs, hit explode, 10,000 damage or whatever it comes out to be. Now with the grenade launcher and everything else, it's gonna be a lot slower. The enemy are gonna hear where you're attacking. Now, yes, with the remote bomb, whenever you throw it, it has those little small beeps, but there's no smoke, nothing, no distinguishing features from the inside that would help you see it so the grenade launcher you can see it right here i did it on here just to show you but it is anti-infantry that is what it's for that's where it's going to excel you should not really be using this against buildings but like i just said you can if you need to on to the infiltrator missile launcher so yes whenever you look at it it says this must be locked on to a vehicle to fire that's not true I'm sure they're gonna patch that maybe, but at this exact moment, you can use this anti-building. And for this one, you're gonna do 1,311 damage per shot on a direct hit. However, where the infiltrator is going to excel is anti-vehicle, and that's what I'm about to show you. But first, let's just go up there and finish our testing. So two blocks is all this one does. So this is how the lock-on system works. So you have to give it time, it'll turn red, it is ready to fire. See, even though I'm near the vehicle, I'm looking at the vehicle, you have to figure out where that center point on the vehicle is, and that's where you have to fire. And then you get a hit, and we can run up, and let's take a look at the actual damage that this weapon did, which it does just over a thousand damage, which is pretty good. Let's do it to this tank too, just to compare the two damages. And on this one, it does about 1200 damage is what it comes out to. So a little bit more damage on the first gen tank and a little bit less damage on the Rhino tank. Now, what is the max range of this weapon? So the max range that I can shoot at somebody is gonna be 200 meters. However, I'm locking on at 276 meters with this rocket and it hits. However, we can go farther. Let's zoom in on this other one, 485 meters. And a solid hit. So this range on this is absolutely disastrous because that means if any team sees you and you're outside 200 meters trying to get close enough to attack them, then you can't get close enough because they will destroy you before you ever get within your main cannon firing range. However, what is the max range of this? So we can see that tank depopulated. Let's slowly get back in. So it populates under 500 meters and then it goes away. So exactly 500 meters, that seems to be the range. Okay, so I have this at times four speed, but let's just go show you that they actually did take damage. The tanks did actually take some, so there's a little bit on that one. You can pause it if you need to, because I am going through pretty quick. And then this one takes damage as well. Okay, so what are the actual results? So here, looking all the way down, we can see that I put the expensive resources. So some of them need wood. I didn't put wood on there, just the expensive craftable resources. 
And then on the right, the top one is always the damage it does to the block it was attached to. And then going down, it's the damage per resource. So for instance, on simple grenade clusters, it did 1,068 total damage and then 178 damage per explosives and multiplied by 10 takes you back up to the full amount of damage. So if we're looking at just explosives, the sticky grenade does the most damage per explosive and then looking at its other crafting components, organic solvent, polymer, and explosives. So that's a lot of oil, but per explosives by itself, it is the most damage. So that's for explosives, but you can take a look at all the others. I calculated all of them out and you can decide for your squad, what are you lacking right now and what would make the most sense for you to save on. And I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did enjoy the content, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell, stay updated with our videos as they're coming out. We're gonna be releasing more content for the front. And how do we decide what content the viewers are looking for? It's based on our comment section and what people are putting in our Discord. So drop a comment or hop in the Discord and leave a message and let us know what you are looking for next 